Hello, and welcome to another episode of My Two Cent. Today's topic is going to be fundamental geometric volume. What does that mean? Well, that basically means I'm going to be talking about geometry for a change. You've heard me use lots of geometric terms and other videos, and it's time that I go into a more detailed and more extensive uh, discussion about geometry itself to help establish my position. This is in relation to infinite and infinity and generally everything else I'll be speaking on because everything has geometry. I'm going to bore you with some, some vocabulary words. Then I'm going to read four definitions. Hopefully you'll keep up. I'm also going to take the liberty of cutting this part of the video as its own separate video. So if you don't want to sit through this, you can just skip straight to the second video. The words that you should familiarize yourself with, and most of these words probably could be Wikipedia, some of them cannot, are magnitude, continuum, infinity, space, volume, mathematics, coordinates, shapes, rectilinear, curvilinear, which are motions, uh, volume, distance, location, direction, scale, length, measurement, speed, and velocity. Um, and obviously, you'll want to, well, I will be personally explaining my definition of what static geometry versus dynamic geometry is and how those relate to the abstract concept, the fabric of space-time, space-time fabric. You should also probably look up, well, time's not really an interesting, uh, you can look up time, time and change as well, especially change. Change is going to be very important when I start explaining how change is a force of nature and not just some general definition or word. Okay. My goal for this particular topic is to explain in great detail static geometry versus dynamic geometry. And often I have, more than once I have used the definition of static geometry for existence and dynamic geometry for the universe without going into any detail based on this is due to my limitation imposed on me by YouTube. So I'm going to try to address that issue with these upcoming episodes of My Two Cent. Uh, I'm going to start with the with four definitions straight from Wikipedia. I use Wikipedia as a resource because I know everybody has access to it. It makes no sense for me to grab some obscure book that only I have in my collection that nobody else can grab and confirm what I'm saying. Wikipedia is a general information for the public. It's the introduction to anything you want to know. You can always go to a university or college to get more information but as an introduction, Wikipedia is an excellent source. I give it two thumbs up. Fundamental geometry. Funda the, okay, the four definitions I have here are geometry, dimensions, infinity, and continuum. Geometry is earth measuring. is a branch of mathematics concerned with the questions of shape, size, relative position of figures, and the properties of shape. Dimensions in mathematics and physics the, di the dimensions of a, of a shape or object is informally defined as the minimum number of coordinates needed to specify each point on it. Infinity is a concept in many fields, most predominantly mathematics and physics, that re refers to a quality without bounds or end. Continuum, anything that goes on through a gradual transition from one condition to a different condition without any abs without any abrupt changes. So the questions we should be trying to address today are what is geometry, what is the static geometry, and what is dynamic geometry? Those are my goals. When I'm done, we should have a basic understanding of geometry. If you have an understanding of geometry, I hope that I will expand on it that my goal is to help you expand on that geometry, your understanding of that geometry, so that we can better understand my infinite and infinity if that is what you choose to know. So with that said, um, part two. This is Paul Emerson and that was my two cents. Welcome back. Um, obviously nothing's changed because I don't do edit jobs. We can continue from here with me freestyling as, as the terms can be referred to, about geometry. Okay, so, what is geometry? What, what, what is meant by geometry, space,
dimensions, coordinates, etc. What does that mean? How do you define the fundamental existence of geometry? It's very difficult because geometry as a concept has a lot of definitions associated with it, like location, shape, volume, mass, distance, location. It's very difficult to pin down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the basics. The basics for geometry is space. We live in space. So that's where I'm going to start. Space is basically empty geometry. I know that's me speaking in circles and I'm sorry, but we're going to have to know other way to do this. So <laughs> space is empty geometry. What that means is if, you, if you're in your room, your room is space. The distance between any two objects or mass is space. Space is volume. Space is measurements. For instance, the term volume usually refers to like a, the capacity of a container. Like if you had a one gallon a one gallon milk jug, the milk in the the milk in the, the container is the volume of the container. The volume is associated with the jug itself. Now you can have a cube that's exactly one meter by one meter by one meter. That's length, width, and depth. That gives you a volume. A lot of people don't recognize that, but you can actually say one square foot is the volume. I have a volume of one square foot. That's important when you talk about mass and density. The volume, the mass of one square foot, of one square foot cube of hydrogen is going to have less mass than one square foot of lead because of their density. I'll go into that later. We're going to stay focused on geometry. So, what do we have so far? We have geometry equals space. So, we know geometry equals space. And space describes the distance. Space describes the physical shape of objects within geometry or within space or space itself. So my body takes up space. My physical body as an actual measurable object is, has geometry. It has geometry and it takes up space in geometry which is the room or the universe itself. The universe itself is truly in geometry, it's geometric. That's why I describe it as geometric, dynamic geometric coordinates. Because to measure geometry, to measure space, to measure an object, you need to define coordinates. Coordinates are little bitty undefined dots that you can subscribe around any object to determine its geometry. If we go to basic geometry right now and we start with some simple abstract concept as a point, which I don't like to use anymore because points are undefined, so I'm going to use the 3D term, a vert, because a vert is defined. A vert is a actual location, a three-dimensional space that describes and, and a component of uh, of a simple polygon or an object in 3D space. Because objects in 3D space, being geometry, are defined by the program itself. The program recognizes the actual object even if it's not there. You can have an object in 3D space without any verse because the computer keeps track of the information. So it's very a very abstract but easily digestible concept to understand. For instance, if I have a simple poly in a computer program called a, sh a cube, we know that a cube is a three-dimensional object that has a length, a width, and a depth. And the universe is hard to describe that out that abstract concept because you need an observer like myself or yourself to describe the actual volume of that cube, where a computer actually keeps track of this information. So that's the point that I'm going to use. We're going to use the computer terminology to establish a position that we can utilize as a reference point for our observations in the physical world, which is special relativity or general relativity. Relativity is the ability to measure and observe information in a very abstract way. So we're going to use the computer as a foundation to observe the universe, which has no foundation, relatively speaking. So what we have is a vert. Vert is a single point. A vert is undefined, but it occupies a length, a width, and a depth in a dimensional coordinate of 3D space. 3D space itself is undefined, but the vert has an actual location in that undefined 3D, 3D space in itself is defined. I know. So, we have one vert. Let's say this vert is at location 000 on a Cartesian plane. Cartesian plane is an abstract concept in a way of keeping track of and measuring positions in three in dimensional space because like everything in the universe space is undefined it takes human beings to define space 
Uh, if you these my table has length, width, and depth that is undefined. It has an absolute distance. It's a finite physical shape in the infinite geometry of our universe, but the shape itself is undefined. I can say from one location to the other, the next location is 20 miles, or I can say from that location to that location is 10 inches. It takes me to define the actual shape. I'm using those terms incorrectly, yes, because we have given inches and miles exact abstract distances, which can be repeatedly measured and repeatedly observed. But the inch as a defined measurement was defined by a mind, body, and spirit similar to myself and given an abstract absolute, but it could have been any abstract absolute. That's why an inch and a centimeter are generally relatively the same distance, even though they have different measurable properties. Measurement. Wikipedia. Anyhow, back to what I was saying. Converting space is, an, is a, at a location of 0, 0, 0 on a Cartesian plane, which is an abstract way of keeping track of dimensional coordinates, allows you to describe a shape. If you start with a cube or a square, you know that a cube is has a length, a width, and a depth. A single vert in 3D space has exactly a length, a width, and a depth, even though it only occupies one dimension. This is why I'm using the computer, because it makes more sense. A single vert in 3D space in the computer program has, it, has in fact a length, a width, and a depth, which you can plot on a Cartesian plane. The, the, the length is x, the width is y, and the depth is z. I'll probably change those as we're speaking, and I apologize in advance, but just remember that three dimensions always have a length, a width, and a depth. If I say that the length is x, or the length is y, or the length is z, I'm, I'm, I should be tr more, more accurate, but I probably won't be because I have limitations. But we just want to recognize length, width, and depth for now. So a single vert has a length, a width, and a depth. And you give that length and that width and that depth an actual, absolute, abstract value, which is, which is usually used on a number. So a single point being x, 0, y, 0, and z, 0, describes the three dimensions of that location of that point, or that vert, I'm sorry, that vert in 3D space. You can draw another 3D vert with another abstract location of x, 1, y, 1, z, 1. Now you have two points. You have a point at location 0 and you have a point at location 1. Those two points, you can draw a line, subscribe a line between those two points, which is another geometric shape. And in the process, you get two, a two-dimensional line. If you draw two points from that line on the on through in three-dimensional space, you get a cube. I'm sorry, you get a, a plane. You get a square. So you have one point. If you draw a point from that line, 90 degrees, you get a second point, and that second point gives you a line. And if you draw two points, if you draw one point from this point in 90 degrees, and another point from this point in 90 degrees, you get two more points. You're at four. You're so far you're at four verts, and you have a cube. I mean, I'm sorry, you have a plane. You have four, four verts with lines connecting them gives you a plane. No matter what distance or direction these verts are at, you still have, you know, a, a, a simple poly that is a, a square at this point. These four verts have to be on the same x coordinate and the same y coordinate. I'm sorry, these two verts have to be on the same z coordinate. They have to have the same height for them to be a plane. The, the x coordinate and the y coordinate can change relative to the Cartesian plane. They can, be in, they can be as large or small as you want. As long as they're connected and they're on the z axis at, at location zero, they are subscribing a poly, a four-sided polygon. If all of the sides are equal, they are subscribing a cube. If two sides are equal, if two of the sides are equal, but are not equal to each other, if side one and side two are equal, then side two, if side A and side B are equal, and side B and side D are equal, but side A and B are not equal to C and D, you have a rectangle. Okay, now, oh, okay, so we got a plane. If you take those four verses of that plane, and you subscribe the plane up within three dimensions, and you give it a height, now you have a cube, or you have a, well you have a cube. I'm going to use the term cube. A cube means all equal sides. 
But the point is, okay, I got it. You have a cube. If all the sides are equal, you have a cube. If all the sides are not equal, then you have a three-dimensional object. A three-dimensional object cannot have any less than six verts to be recognized as a three-dimensional object. The reason why is because the simplest three-dimensional object, the simplest three-dimensional object in our universe, in our space, cannot have less than six sides. It cannot have less than six verts and it can't have less than eight verts to six sides and to be recognized as a simple poly in our universe. That's the fundamental truth. You can try to prove that wrong. I would love to see if I'm right, but that should be a fundamental truth. You should not be able to subscribe a three-dimensional object, a true three-dimensional object. That means you can have two planes side by side and you can call that a three-dimensional object, but the planes themselves are just two planes side by side. They, the planes themselves don't have any height. If they're true planes, they have no height. If you, if you subscribe to two planes with height, then you have 16 verts, and you don't have the simplest object. So check it out. I want to, it'd be cool to see if that's accurate. But um, keep trying to stay on, trying to stay focused and on um, topic. Right now we have, we should have a cube. We should have a physical three-dimensional object. The simplest object in our universe. An object, a geometric object has no fundamental forces or abstract attributes such as mass, gravity, magnetism, temperature, light, darkness, etc. This is why I'm using three-dimensional programs as a foundation because you can eliminate all that stuff. For instance, me as an object, I'm comprised of the chemical elements. The chemical elements being this thing, those associated with the periodic table. But my geometry is separate from the chemical elements themselves. The space that I take up can be described as an abstract concept void of any uh, dynamic forces or physical matter or energy. That, that is what I mean by dimensional coordinates. When you eliminate all of the matter, energy, or physical forces in, the, in, the, in our universe, in our space, then you are left with empty geometry. Empty geometry is is dynamic coordinates <clears throat> because you don't have a reference point. For instance, I'm sitting here describing to you a cube that you can in your mind visualize, but there's nothing actually here in front of me. That is dimensional coordinates. That is the abstract concept that I'm going to address because it is that abstract concept is what our universe is comprised of. Our universe is comprised of empty geometry. We as human beings, as creatures of my body and spirit, literally describe the actual geometry. We give rise to it by recognizing its existence without evidence of its existence. And that is the beauty of mathematics. Because math allows us to do this in a very accurate, abstract, reliable, measurable, repeatable way. And so, what is the difference between static geometry and dynamic geometry? The difference between static geometry and dynamic geometry is when you have a, a coordinate, let's say you have a vert, and the vert is at a location, is that on a Cartesian plane at a, at a location 0, x0, I'm sorry, location x0, y0, and z0, what you have is a static geometric location. You have a you have a, a vert that is located at rest with 100% absolute potential of location zero zero x zero y zero z. That is an absolute location. It's static. It doesn't change. It's it's always the same. It's constant. If you had another object in on the same Cartesian plane in relationship to that to that particular vert, you can move that object around relative to that position and. Always use that position to check yourself, to, to check and determine where the location is at. A good example of that is the North Pole as an absolute location of the Earth. The North Pole in relationship to the Earth itself never changes. It's constant. So it's South Pole. There are constant locations on the Earth. They exist at a specific length, width, and volume location in relation to the Earth. The actual surface of the Earth has been described as longitude and latitude coordinates of the sphere the earth is a sphere, or at least I believe the earth is a sphere, you know for a fact that the location of the North Pole is absolute, 
and you can measure your the, the distance you travel in relation to where you was to where you're going in relation to the actual location of the North Pole will give you an absolute location. So the North Pole is an abstract the North Pole is an abstract static dimensional coordinate. It never changes. If you're in a, on a boat in the ocean, your position is constantly changing. You have no you have very limited control over the ability to stay stationary relative to the location of the North Pole as a as a repeatedly measurable static dimensional coordinate associated with longitude and magnitude dimensions of the planet Earth as a globe. In the same way, in the universe, you can say that the sun is a location or or, or a coordinate that is an absolute location. The prime meridian line, I hope, is another example of what I'm suggesting. The prime meridian, if I'm using the word correctly, is the location on the earth and zero latitude. Zero latitude on the prime meridian, which I believe runs through a European nation, is the location on earth where we decided that this is going to be the zero point of travel. The reason for this is because if an, if an airplane, or if you're, trying to tra if you're trying to traverse the Earth globally, you need a location to start with. You have to have a position to measure yourself from, because you can't always measure yourself from your center. It is a very fundamental and accept widely accepted idea that you are, your own you are the center of your own universe, which is true to a degree. The problem being the center of your own universe is you're, you, you're constantly changing. How can you find your location if you are your location? How do you find your way back home if you are your center? You have no way to navigate your navigate your surroundings. If you say that your home is your center, when you move relative to your home, you know how to navigate back to your home because your home is a constant. But when you're your center, you are a dynamic. You are a dynamically moving zero, 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 which is too abstract to be observable and repeatable. This is why I subscribe to the to existence being static dimensional geometry, because the universe, as a, as an abstract concept of a location that is absolute with no changing variables in these dimensional coordinates, gives you a reference to measure the universe against. Because if the universe is in motion relative to static geometry, you can understand that. You can perceive that in your mind because you understand that. Somewhere in the universe, there is an absolute zero location of infinite coordinates. X, Y, and Z being length, width, and depth, being three dimensions in existence can be infinite. That means you can subscribe one coordinate as an infinite magnitudinal value into infinity, where number one is a, as a value can be a coordinate. Number two is a value can be a coordinate. Number three is a value can be a coordinate. Number four is a value can be a coordinate. And these coordinates can be associated with a magnitude of zero. I know that's very tricky to th think about, but let's let's try this. In M theory, string theory, there's 11 dimensional coordinates. So I'm going to use the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G. No, that's confusing. I'm going to use Z, Y, X, W, U, V, T, can't do the alphabet backwards. Um, okay, we'll use the beginning letters. If we're gonna go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, K. So from A to K, you have 11 dimensions. Each one of those dimensions from A to K is gonna be a coordinate. So coordinate A is gonna be zero, coordinate B is gonna be zero, all the way to coordinate K. That's 11 dimensions. That is what M theory suggests that our universe operates on. We operate on three of those dimensions, let's say A, B, and C. We operate on length, width, and depth as geometry is concerned. The fourth dimension is recognized as time, but it's not associated with geometry. So we recognize, we're going to recognize A, B, and C because I'm unable to do the alphabet backwards, I'm sorry. We're going to recognize A, B, and C as length, width, and depth. And we're going to recognize D through K as dimensions 4 through 11, which allows, as M theory and string theory describes, the, the, the function of our universe to behave correctly. So A, B, and C is the first three dimensions. D through K are the 11 other dimensions. Now, 
existence is infinite. If existence is truly infinite, what that means is from A to Z is 24, I hope, dimensions. Because there should be 24 letters in the English alphabet off the top of my head. I haven't been in high school for a very long time. So there should be 24 letters in our alphabet that can give us 24 characters that we can use to describe vert, the dimensional corners of a single vert in the 3D program. Remember in the program I said that X, Y, and Z are actually, a vert has an X, Y, Z coordinate which is actually length, width, and depth. Existence, this is very important, existence being infinite has an infinite vert of coordinates that string into infinity that all have a value of zero. That value of zero, that location, is absolute and static, never changing. The universe is moving through these infinite dimensions only on 11 of them. The universe is a finite geometry of up to 11 dimensions. The human condition is a finite existence of only 3D dimensions. What that means is is the existence has on a, as a Cartesian plane of infinite geometric volume and location zero there is an infinite number of zero dimensions the universe operates on dimensions A I'm sorry yeah dimensions A through K inside of existence whereas existence has an infinite string of values, our universe being separate from existence and being dynamic dimensional coordinates, operates on dimensions A through K. Human beings being limited in our, our ability to observe and understand our physical universe, our minds operate on, our mind, body, and spirits operates on dimensions A, B, and C, length, width, and depth. We operate through time as a magnitudinal value, as an abstract concept, the fourth dimension. 